Sup guys, Punchy McSlap here doing a very basic tutorial to the War Z map editor. The only reason I'm doing this is because people have literally requested it. I really don't think I'm good enough to do a tutorial on this software because I, I, I only know the basics. But that seems to be enough to do the maps that I've done. So yeah, I'll teach you what I know. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you do enjoy the video. If you want to subscribe, just hit that sub button down in the bottom corner. Yeah. That's the intro out the way, let's get started. Okay, while the loading screens go up, I'll tell you where I got it from. As you can see there, it's www.ragezone.com. I'll put the link in the in the description as well. Um, you do have to be registered on the website, but it's still worth it because there's loads of like-minded people there that you can talk to about um, whatever maps that you make or whatever emulators that are already out there. So yeah, it's worthwhile doing. Um, I mean, the best advice I can give you for this map editor is just let your imagination go mental. That's what I do. Just combine buildings, you know, shrink buildings into the ground, make them huge. Just, just honestly, you can just go nuts with it and just think outside of the box. Something that Hammerpoint didn't really grasp when they made the game initially. Okay, I've loaded up the normal War Z alpha map or whatever. I do like to work out of this and all my projects seem to be in the same map, so it's quite good. Some people might recognise this as once being the airport. It's a good giveaway. I just deleted the entire airport and that made a nice area to build in really, which is where I built my prison, which is just over there. Right. Getting started then, as you can see, you've got all your stuff on the screen here. It can be a bit overwhelming. I mean, it, it is for me. I don't know what half of it does. I stick to what I know, um, which works. You know, I'm happy with that. It's not that bad. But yeah, I mean, that prison over there, that took me about two hours to do, something like that. So, you know, once you understand it, you can, uh, you can do enough. So settings, I mean, best for saving your map, save often. Just save all the time. Right, first step, terrain, version 2. Get your land set up first, so let's show you how to make a hill. Um, let's change the size of that so that we can have a bigger hill. If you click once and then let it go, and click again and then let it go, as you can see it expands. So that'll give you a good slant to get up the hill. Now don't be put off by the fact that it looks all rigid and horrible because we will smooth that off in a sec. So there you go, we've got a hill. Go to smooth and change the size of it again. I like to work with a smaller circle, feel like you can get more accuracy from it. There you go. See, now when you're walking up that as your character, it'll just be like a normal hill, you won't be all like rigid and getting stuck in it and stuff. When you get your head around this, it makes you wonder why there are so many glitches in the game. You know, why can't you just perfect an area and then move on to the next area? Why are there still buildings that you can glitch through and rocks that you can get caught in and stuff? Okay, that's smoothed off nice and neat. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I mean, there's a few other things you can do, like erosion. Yeah, that should take down the area as though, like, water's literally got it. So, as you can see, it's sinking a little bit. Yeah, that'll do. I like that. Right, now... Paint. This is how I did the um, the road going up to the prison entrance. If you just delete a section, let's go small again. If you just delete a section like that, that'll get rid of the grass colour on the uh, on the floor. You can start a map from fresh if you want. You don't have to do it this way, but I like to work out of the already predetermined map. Um, starting fresh just gives you a, a, an empty an empty page, and you just build everything from the ground up. Uh, yeah, uh, make sure you untick a razor. The amount of times I've crashed the software by not unticking it and then just doing this. There you go. So now we've got like a cobblestone path and a cobblestone top to the hill. But yeah, if you don't untick a razor, it does crash the software. Uh, let's make that road a little bit longer, I think. So we need to erase a bit more grass. Um, yeah. Be a nice little path running up to the hill, I think. So, so yeah, there you go. So we'll take a raise all again. That's what you need to untick when you're done with it. Yeah, 
And there we go, we've got more cobblestone. So we've got a nice path leading up to the top of the hill now. Alright, I apologise already guys if this isn't enough information for you, but as I say, I only literally know the basics. So all I can do is tell you what I know. Okay, so let's go to objects, pick which kind of object we want, so let's just go with like a... Yeah, we'll go with the church for now. There we go, so now we have a church. Now to get that actually onto the map like that, so you can play around it, if you just hold control, and then you'll be able to just free move it around the way I am there. And then if you just left click, like that, it'll place it. So now it is literally placed there, so you can do that with all the other bits and bobs as well, if you just click on all the different shit. So look, look the trees. And don't be concerned as well about the fact that they go on funny angles like that. Yeah, I'll show you now. See that one there, that's on a weird ass angle. We'll fix that in a sec. So we'll put it one either side of the path. There you go. So now, again, if you click on the item itself, that's uh, left click, and then press control again, it'll bring up all these options for you. And if you see the rings, just control the different angles of the uh, of the item. And if you just hold right click and then just move your mouse, you can cycle around those wheels. Just getting things onto the right angle. Yeah, control is everything. Control is key. So holding control while highlighting different things. See, look, you can go up and down there holding on the arrows. So there we've got yeah, the, uh, the top arrow, the green arrow, take it up, and then blue towards you, red in the other direction, and so on. There's plenty of controls that you can do on each object just by clicking on it and then pressing control. As you can see, yeah, we can turn it around there so it faces the path a little bit better. Bring it towards us a little bit. So yeah, you can you can play with things for hours, literally hours, and getting them right. I mean, as you can see there, the floor is still inside of it. Yeah, you know, so you can. As I was saying, thinking outside the box. If you don't want the church and you just want a tiny little weird-looking building, there you go. That's all you would see on the map. So you just see the tiny little spire for people to sit off in. Or well, we've got a roof, and then yeah, it, you know, it makes it slightly less recognisable as a church. Just by dissipating into the floor. I do think it's fun to combine buildings and just put a building on top of a building and maybe put a staircase going around it so that you can get to both parts of it. See, there's so much you can do just playing with the terrain. Always use terrain 2. Uh, terrain version 1 for some reason doesn't work for me. I'm no expert, I've got no idea why. It's just terrain version 2 seems um, seems to work every time. See, so I just shrunk the the centre of the hill down a little bit there now, so less floor is coming through the uh, through the church. I don't want a tree. See, so if you just click on something that it's click off the screen kind of thing, click off something. You know, let's just try and find. I don't know how to unselect things, so I tend to select something that <laughs> that won't affect the item. So let's go down. Okay, yeah. Okay, there's nothing in that list, so I'm not selecting anything now. If I just press Control on that again while I'm not selecting anything, it brings up a different set of circles. That's what that does. You can change the size of the object, the physical size of it. So now we've got a mega church, and you can just make a huge building like that. <laughs> so again, this is just holding Control. This is why I'm not highlighting anything. And look, we've got a, a giant stretched out weird Tim Burton-esque church now. Okay, now we shall try and go into the map so we can walk around it and give it like a player's point of view. To do so, you would press F8. It may seem like it crashes the game out because it takes ages to do it and your PC starts grumbling. It has crashed before for me. I find if you press F8, wait a couple of seconds, and then press Escape, your character will just appear in the map for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know what's going on with the software. But it's a the way I use it is I find workarounds to get it to work. And that seems to work for me. As, as so. Yeah. So now I've got a little guy there. Now, again, what you'll find is everything that you place on the map, you will be able to walk through like this. Ta-da! Complete no clipping. 
which I've seen sometimes on actual servers, which is disgusting. This will stay this way until you save your game, exit the map, and re-enter the map. And then there will be no more, no clipping. You'll be able to just walk through a building the way you're supposed to. So, I'll do that now. We will save and exit. By the way, when you press F8 and escape to go into the map, it just, just randomly generates a character for you. So yeah, let's go and I'm going to place. Yeah, that's fine. So we'll save the map and then we'll snap cut. Just take a few seconds to save the map as well. Given the amount of data that it's processing, it's not a not a bad thing. There you go. So I think it's just saved there now because the icons just changed. Just keep an eye off something like that. Just maybe run your cursor over other icons just to make sure it has actually saved because you'll know that it'll start highlighting icons and stuff so you'd be able to tell straight away like that see that means it's saved so snap cut okay let's boot it back up the second time you load the software it always loads up a lot quicker don't know what that's about Okay, we're back into the game. Still got our giant church. And if we do good old F8 and escape, we should have another randomly generated character. Ba -doom. Same guy, different mask, different gun. And now we'll be able to walk on the building without clipping through it. There we go. And that's it. I tend to make entire cities and so on before I exit the game. And then everything just fixes itself. You'll be able to walk on buildings the way you're supposed to. So I don't know how the actual developers of the game make the mistakes that they do. <laughs> Alright, and that's it guys. That is literally the basics. So take those basics and go make something epic. I'm making a map at the moment which is just totally mental. Um, it's completely unlike anything that's been done before by the infestation people and I should be posting that in the next week or so so yeah I hope this helped some people out and please leave comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe cheers guys see you later bye